Good day. The name of the broadcast is In Season and Out of Season, and I'm Father Tom DiLorenzo from the Holy Rosary in Winthrop, and we've done over 500 of these, way over 500, and my Lord, when I started, I said, maybe we'll do a few, and uh, I keep on doing them and doing them and doing them, and I hope they're a blessing to you. I hope they're a blessing to you. I received a letter from an 84-year-old man. He said, Dear Father Tom, I love to listen to you talk about Jesus. He said, two years ago, I gave my life to Jesus, and I am so wonderfully, wonderfully happy. Imagine, when he was 82, he gave his life to Jesus. He took time to tell the Lord, I give you my life. I surrender my life to you. He said, I love to hear you talk about Jesus. It makes me so happy. He even sent me money. He said, you know, go buy yourself lunch. And I wouldn't use it for myself. But uh, we're using it for radio and television. And uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing. You never know. I never know who I'm reaching. So today I'm reaching you, I hope. And I hope the Lord's going to bless you real good today. <laughs> real good. We all need a blessing, don't we? These are the darkest days of the year. The economy is terrible. We have so much debt, but God is still on the throne, and he still hears and answers prayer. Do you understand that? No matter what you're going through, the Lord is still on the throne. He hears and answers prayer, and it's going to be fine. You have to trust in him. I have to trust in him. Every day is a new day to trust in the Lord. What time is it? It's time to trust the Lord. It's time to love the Lord. That's what time it is. And Nothing is going to happen that you can't handle with Jesus. You know, I know things happen and they seem out of control sometimes, that they're too big. I was just talking to someone today. He has to do something like go to a court uh, out of state. And he's a little fragile about it. I said, listen, first of all, what's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is what's happening now. That's the worst thing. It can't get any worse than this. So maybe it's going to get better. And you have nothing to fear because you're going with Jesus. Whether they listen to you or don't listen to you, you know what you're saying is real and true. And you know what? That, that, that devil that scares us just doesn't do any good Fear is useless, absolutely useless. And I understand fear very well. Gave it up a long time ago. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. I have the Lord. And even when I go through the darkest valleys and it seems like God doesn't even hear me, though I know he does, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You know why? Because he promised me he'd be with me. Even though I don't feel him, I know he's with me. I know he's with you, and he loves you. Today I'm looking at John's Gospel, and uh, verse 29, the first chapter, John 1, 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming to him, and John said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Just think about that. You know, if you were Jewish, you'd know exactly what that meant. If you were Jewish, you'd know exactly what that meant. The Lamb of God. That's the Passover Lamb. That's the Lamb that they, they, they drained his blood and placed the blood of the Lamb on the lintels and the angel of death passed over. But now John says, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus will do this. He is the Paschal Lamb. He is the Lamb of God. He will die upon the cross. He will shed his blood for you and for me. His blood is our salvation. He will wash us clean with his precious blood. And he just asks us to give our life back to him. Like that man that wrote to me, I gave my life to Jesus at 82.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. You know, your sins are not so great that the Lord cannot forgive you. That's just, that's just so real. My sins are not so great that the Lord cannot forgive me. He's always ready to forgive. But we need to want forgiveness. And we need to turn away from our sin. And maybe, you know, we've been into sin in the past and we're afraid God's going to reject us. No, he's not going to reject you. If he rejects you, you tell me, because I'll, I'll give him a piece of my mind. But I know he'll never reject you. Because of the cross. Because of the cross. How can he reject someone he died for? How can he reject someone that he loved so much, you, that he gave his life for you? He can't reject you. Let me just continue. This is he of whom I said, after me there comes a man who is preferred before me because he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he may be made manifest in Israel. Therefore I came baptizing in water. So John tells you his vocation to manifest Jesus to Israel, to, to, to prepare the way of the Lord. That's John's vocation. I knew him not, but that he may be manifest to Israel, therefore I came baptizing with water. And John gave this testimony saying, I saw the Spirit coming down as a dove from heaven, and it remained upon him. And I knew him not, but he who sent me to baptize, he said, the one on whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, he is the one that will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and gave testimony that this is the Son of God. So somewhere in his journey, John heard from the Father, you are going to see the one on whom the Spirit of God rests. He's going to descend upon him. And also, you're going to hear my voice. This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. It tells us that in Matthew and in Mark. <coughs> That when the Spirit of God came upon Jesus, the Father spoke, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So now I'm going to look at uh, Isaiah. And we're going to look at Isaiah 42. And listen to what it says. Behold my servant, I will uphold him, my elect, my soul is well pleased in him. I have given him my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry. He shall not respect people. Neither shall his voice be heard abroad. A bruised reed he shall not break. A smoldering wick he shall not quench. A bruised reed he shall not break. A smoldering wick he shall not quench. And he shall bring forth judgment unto truth. This is my beloved son. This is the beloved of the father, prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, the son of God, upon whom the spirit of God rests. He knows you. He knows you. He will not break the bruised reed. He will handle you with care if you entrust yourself to him. He will not put out the smoldering wick. He will breathe upon it so that it bursts into flame. He will not harm you. He loves you. He gave his life for you. He intercedes for you now at the Father's right hand. This is my beloved son. You see, when the father spoke this, he demands a response. What are you going to do with my son? You say, well, you know, I've got so many troubles. Then you need to turn to the son. His name is Jesus. I can't pay my bills. You need to turn to the son. His name is Jesus. We might be evicted. 
You need to turn to the Son. His name is Jesus. I'm not telling you things are easy. I'm not telling you things are easy. But he will give you what you need. He will give you peace. He knows how to do things. But you need to trust him. You need to trust him. He will not be like, you know, the old-fashioned mouse trap that when the mouse gets the cheese, comes down on him. No, that's not the Lord. His arms are open to you. They're open wide to you. He knows you. He knows your heartaches. He knows your troubles. He knows what you've been going through. And he wants to help you. It's so simple that he wants to help you. You know, I've learned an awful lot from, from Alcoholics Anonymous, friends of mine that go to Alcoholics Anonymous, to ask the Lord for help in whatever you need. Just to ask him for help. I need help, Lord, in this area. Could you come and help me? I need your help. I can't do this on my own. I need your help. Would you help me with this? And there's nothing too small or too big that he won't help you with if you want his help. But you've got to get serious with him. I really need your help, Lord. What are you fighting? Are you fighting fear? I need your help, Lord. I'm desperate. I need your help. Would you give me your help? I don't want to live in fear. It ties me up. Would you set me free? Your word says, if the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. I don't want to live in fear. I want to live free. I want to be free. Would you help me? Would you untie me? Because you see, if you're afraid, it's not because of 2011. There are things that have happened to you years before that fear has become your enemy. Would you go back with me and show me that you were with me during all those times when fear became so real? He will help you, and he will not break the bruised reed. He will not quench the smoldering wick. He will help you. He's real. He's Lord. He shed his blood for you. You know, not only does the Father say, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased, but people who are in Jesus, people who give their life to Jesus every day, the Father says the same thing. This is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased because she's in my son. She's in Christ. You see, this is my beloved son, and he's in Jesus. He's given his life to my son, and I'm well pleased with him. You know, that's the greatest thing, to be in Jesus. See, you see me today, okay? And what you see is not what you get. There's much more than me, because you see, I'm in Jesus. It's a, it's a, it's a package deal. Wherever I am, he is, closer than a brother. You say, yeah, because you're a priest. No, 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 way before I was a priest. Way before I was a priest. Wherever I am, he is. I am in him. I'm in the beloved. I belong to him. He's mine, and I'm his. And I'm not so special that it's only about me. You can have the same thing, and maybe even more. But like that man, you have to give your life to Jesus. Every part of your life. Yeah, even the cellar of your life, where all that mess is. And all the attic of your life, you know, 
where all those cobwebs are. And all the side rooms of your life. Well, you know what? Maybe you can't do it all at once. But you can invite them into your life one room at a time. And ask them to be gentle. Remind them what he said. A bruised reed you shall not break. A smoldering wick you shall not quench. Remind them. I want to give you my life one room at a time. One room at a time. I want to belong totally to you. I need you. I'm desperate for you. A bruised reed he shall not break. Smoldering wick he shall not quench. And he comes to bring light. Oh yes, Jesus comes to bring light. Light into the darkness. That's what he comes to do. To bring light into the darkness. That you need never be afraid. He comes to give you light. He comes to give you life. That's why an 84-year-old man can say, I'm wonderfully at peace. I'm wonderfully happy since I've given my life to Jesus. You know what the devil would say to him? Why did you wait so long? God would never say that. Jesus would never say that. You know, somewhere along the line he heard that he could give his life to Jesus, and he did. And things have changed for him. I love to listen to you talk about Jesus. You can just tell that this man's heart swells when people speak about the one that he loves. It's, it's really all about Jesus. It's all about mercy. You see, mercy is being extended to us. But you see, you don't need to accept it. Mercy Grace is being extended to you through the cross. See, it's all about the cross. See, even if you never hear a word that I'm see, saying, okay, there's always the crucified Jesus in back of me. That love of God poured out on the cross. That picture of love, that picture of sacrifice, that picture of showing us that he gave his life for us. Even if you don't hear me, look at the cross and see the love that God has for you. See the love that God has for you, that he gave his son for you. And he will not break the bruised reed. He will not quench the smoldering wick. He wants you. He wants you because he loves you. I'm just saying that this is real. This is real. But he'd never force you, and neither would he force me. He waits for us. Imagine the one who spoke the world into existence waits for us. He doesn't pound the door down. He knocks gently. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone would hear and open the door, I would come in and dine with him. Gently he knocks. He doesn't shove his way in. Gently he knocks. And he waits for you and me. Such a friend. Such a kind friend. Never imposing never imposing himself on us. If we want to go our own way, we can. Never imposing, but always ready at our beck and call if we want him. It's wonderful. Why wait? 
Why wait? Why hear another person say, yeah, you see, I'm in all this trouble, and I never turned to him before, so why should I turn to him in my trouble, you know? Why didn't I turn? Listen, I don't care about before. The only thing you have now is now. That's all you have is now. I don't care about before. Before is water under the bridge. That's what before is. It's not going to help you. It's now. Now is the time to give your life to Jesus. Now is the time to say, here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Now is the time to say, I'm desperate. I need your help. Now is the time. You know, before makes no difference. It's all gone. Now what do I give him? Oh, the only thing I can give him is my brokenness and my sins. That's all I can give him. And I say, if you can do something with me, here I am. If you can do something with me, I surrender myself. Here I am. You see. He's not like us. He's not like us. He'll never, ever, ever look at you and say, where were you these past years? Not at all. But with open arms, he'll receive you just as you are. Interesting. Nobody else is like that exactly. Just as you are, without one plea, but that his blood was shed for thee, and that he bids you come to him. O Lamb of God, I come. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Behold him on whom the Spirit descended. Behold him on whom the Spirit rests. Behold the servant of the Lord, who is God and man. His name is Jesus. And he loves you. Behold him. How do you respond? How do you respond? I can't tell you how. But respond. Respond. Here I am, Lord. I surrender. I'm a mess. Would you fix me? I need a sign. Would you give me a sign that you care for me? I don't know how you're going to respond. Everyone responds differently. I can't tell you what to say, how to say it. There are no magic words. It's what's here in your heart. No magic words. How are you going to respond? You have to respond. Here I am, Lord. I surrender. I love you. Come dwell in my heart. Give me yourself. I don't know how you're going to respond. But respond. Even if you have to say, where were you when? If that's the way you have to respond, then respond. At least you're communicating. You're communicating with him. Where were you when? I lost my job. My mother died. Where were you? I need you, but where were you? You have to respond. Be honest. Be honest. And then tell him how much you need him. After you're honest, tell him how much you need him. Where were you? But I'm desperate for you, God. Would you come now? I'm desperate for you.
You have to respond. I'm not going to let you go today. You have to respond. And no one can tell you how. We can suggest, but I can't tell you how to respond. And he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to respond. Hmm. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. A bruised reed he shall not break. A smoldering wick he shall not quench. This is my beloved son. Embrace him. Give yourself to him. Call upon his name. His name is Jesus. Father, we ask for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon your people, that you would heal the sick and Open their hearts to the love that you have for them. I ask this in Jesus' name. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Respond. God bless you.